Hello and happy Tuesday. Um, thank you for joining us for another episode of At Home with Joseph. Um, today, it's all about shoe pastry. Um, without further ado, I'll leave it over, hand it over to Mr. Joseph Marini. Thank you again. Have a great day. Bye. Welcome to my home, where I'm gonna be videoing a new series all about domestic authenticity. I hope to share many ideas to inform and inspire you to live a full life from cooking and baking to gardening and entertaining. Since the early 1900s, the concept of home economics has inspired a holistic approach to how we live and entertain in our homes. I encourage you to find your own vision of creativity within yours so that you can feel pride in the connection that you create with it. Join me as we explore Life at Home with Joseph. Hey there, good afternoon. Thank you for joining. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about some hors d'oeuvres that are really great for entertaining. And one of my favorites is a pate choux puff, uh, which is a very versatile type of a pastry and it can either be savory or sweet. And even though we are in the middle of a pandemic, uh, we shouldn't forego uh, making plans to entertain. Even if it's just for the few people that are in your household, now this year even more so than uh, previously, really take the effort to uh, make it special. It's a great time of year to appreciate everything that we actually do have in life. And today we're gonna make two versions. We're gonna make a savory version, which I serve at all of my parties. The second pastry that we're gonna make is actually miniature eclairs. Uh, because I'm already making the pate choux, I will actually do both of these recipes. It's taking care of killing two birds with one stone, and it really does make a nice presentation. So pate choux is a very old French uh, pastry, and the ingredients that it requires is one cup of milk. I actually use a half a cup of water and a half a cup of milk. Um, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. It is very important that you sift the flour ahead of time. You don't want any lumps uh, that will not dissolve when you're making um, your paste. You have seven tablespoons of unsalted butter and one teaspoon of salt. If you're making just a sweet variation of this, you can also add in one tablespoon of sugar uh, if you're making eclairs or, or a gateau or anything like that but today we're gonna to leave that out. So to begin the process, you want to boil your water and milk mixture with your salt, get it all in there, and your butter. So what we wanna do is bring all of this mixture to a boil, but we don't want to boil out the liquid that's in there. So before it actually comes up to a boil, you wanna get the butter to actually melt into the milk mixture, and then we'll bring it up to a rolling boil. If it were to start boiling now, while the butter was trying to melt, you would just end up evaporating the liquid. Once the liquid starts coming to a full boil, so not just a little bit around the pot, but the whole pot starts to come to a full boil, we're gonna dump in our flour and set the heat on low, because we do still wanna cook out the flour. So we've come to a full boil here. I'm gonna turn this down to low, dump in the flour, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stir this mixture. And this is gonna, gets a little bit messy, but it's gonna stir into a, a full lump of flour. So don't be concerned that you've got a really stiff mixture here. But we're gonna cook it for about another minute just to burn off some of the flour flavor. Make sure that every all of the lumps of flour in it are dissolved. You can see we have a really stiff mixture here. You'll know this dough is done cooking when it starts to leave a faint trail of 
dough along the bottom of the pan and I'll show you what that looks like. And you start to see this part of the dough, you're done. So we are going to transfer this to our mixing bowl fitted with a paddle mixer and add the rest of the ingredients. So we've got our hot dough. We're gonna turn this into the mixture fitted with a paddle. And on very low speed, <clears throat> While the mixture is hot, you want a little, little, a little bit of steam out of it. But while it's hot, you're gonna add in one egg at a time until it's mixed. You do not wanna over whip this dough, so on a low speed is just fine. And it will look somewhat curdled as you're doing this. And what I'm putting in are five eggs. So I've separated five whole eggs and I'm adding them one at a time. And I've got a sixth egg here that I've whisked into an egg mixture because I may not need that whole egg if I need it at all. Really depends on the consistency of the, uh, of the dough. And the reason that I do this is because at the end, you're gonna wanna do an egg brush on all of the uh, batter before you get it into the oven. And in an effort to not waste an egg, if I don't use all of this, I can use that. So the best way to test this dough to see if it's done is to pull your spatula out. And if your dough hangs, it's okay that it drips, but if it hangs like that off of your paddle, it's done. So now we're gonna scoop this into our pastry bag. And the easiest way to do this is to set your pastry bag in some type of a vessel and use an ice cream scooper to scoop the batter into the bag. And I've prepared two different bags. Because I'm going to show you two different types of ways for piping them. And with your dough in your bag and your pastry bag, and you want to squeeze it out, you don't want to do it in rounds, you want to do it in more in kind of the style of a blob for the best way to say it and pull up at the very end so you got a little peak. We're gonna push those down. But, and so these are gonna bake nice and puffy and beautiful and airy. You're gonna bake these in a 425 degree oven for the first 10 minutes. And then we're gonna lower it down and that really high heat is gonna help these to puff up. And so the second dough that we're going to do is we're going to make profiteroles. And the reason why this is in a different bag is because I prefer to use a star tip when piping these. The star tip is going to help to give a really long uh, uniform shape to the eclair when it's baked. To make the eclair, you want to go very slowly and evenly and make a log. And I'm using the one end of my silk hat as a guide to keeping the same size of these. And the other shape we're gonna do is I have created this round template out of a piece of plastic. And one of the molds that you can do for filling, this is more of a table presentation, but you can make a circle out of it. Oops. And this form just helps you keep 
a circle base. And I usually go over the top of it with another layer. So I want this to be nice and big and thick. And then once that's piped, we're just going to carefully pull our form out of there and we've got a nice circle. And we're also going to give these an egg wash, help smooth out the sides. So this round one, when it's filled, we're going to cut it in half, fill it with a mousse, and then you can present it on your table with the center of it filled with some fresh raspberries or some blueberries. And it makes a really nice dessert when you're having a dinner party. These will now go into our 425 degree oven to start the process and we'll check on them in a few minutes. So the savory filling that we're going to make for our puffs for entertaining is a curry chicken salad. This is a very old recipe of mine. It is a great crowd pleaser that everybody loves uh, when I serve it at parties. And it really makes a great filling for uh, the puffs that we just baked off. So some of the ingredients in uh, the curry chicken salad is chopped up shallots, two tablespoons of curry powder, chopped dill, capers, uh, celery that's chopped up, canned pineapple. Now there is something very important to tell you that you cannot use fresh pineapple in this recipe. It has to be canned. The fibers are too raw in the fresh pineapple if you were to put it in there and it actually spoils the chicken salad. So pineapple that's canned in pineapple juice and then it's chopped, uh, slivered almonds, blonde raisins, Duke's mayonnaise, and quartered red grapes. And to three chicken breasts, we're gonna add all of these and we are going to mix them. And I also am gonna add just a little bit of Maldon finishing salt in this. I do not salt this dish when I'm making it because the chicken is cooked in a very well salted water. So I'd wanna wait until the end to taste it to see what it does taste like. Again, you wanna add just enough salt so that you can taste all of the ingredients, the curry, the mustard, the dill, the shallots. Perfect. So one very important step when making these is when they're just about done, you wanna pull them out and poke a hole in them because you don't want moisture to be trapped in them, otherwise they'll fall. And then you wanna put them right back into the oven for about another three minutes on a low temperature just to let them crisp up. But these are pretty well done. So we're just gonna let those finish off. We have these beautiful round golden puff pastries and they have a really nice crispy shell to them. So we're gonna very gently with a serrated knife, we are going to slice through them and look how beautiful that came out. So those are gonna get filled with the chicken salad. So with all of our shells cut, we're gonna scoop in some chicken salad into it. And I like to use a small little scooper like this because it really, it gets the chicken salad in there in one scoop, it's nice and clean. And then you can put the top on it like that. Isn't that just beautiful? These are curry chicken salad puffs made with a pate choux and my homemade curry chicken salad recipe. Not only do I love to make these, but I also love to eat them. So for the next portion to show you another use that you can use with pate choux, this is actually a ring that we've made and we're gonna fill this with some of our uh, espresso mousse. And this is gonna be a presentation that you could take to a table when you're entertaining for a bunch of guests. 
that using a um, ice cream scooper, I like to scoop my mousse right into the ring. Keeps it nice and clean. And you know you're getting an even amount all the way around. You're very carefully going to place the top of the ring back on. Just give it a little bit of a push down. I've got some washed and dried raspberries here. We are gonna fill the center with some of these raspberries. Got a nice heaping mound of them. And then we're gonna finish this with a little bit of confectionery sugar sprinkled all the way around it. Doesn't that look nice and festive for Christmas? Maybe a few leaves on either side of the platter. And you have a beautiful dessert that you can present to your friends or family, anybody that comes over for entertaining. And all you've got to do is just cut slices out of this and serve it and give them some raspberries. And you have a really light, delicious, wonderful dessert. So we're going to slice these open. Look how beautiful the inside of those are. These are going to get filled with our pastry cream. And the filling that we made is an espresso mousse. So in order to fill these, we're going to, I'm going to show you a little trick just in case that you don't have a piping bag. So in a Ziploc bag, I'm going to make sure all the air is out of here. I scooped in my mousse into there and I'm just going to clip off a very small corner of this bag. So I'm gonna very carefully pipe this in. This is gonna be so delicious. So now we're gonna reapply our tops to this. Not squishing too hard on them. You don't want all of that nice mousse to spill out of them. You want to have a very clean presentation. And we are just going to very gently dip these into just a little bit of chocolate just on the top. Like that. They don't have to be loaded with chocolate. This is just going to make a really beautiful presentation. And this is just a chocolate ganache that we're dunking these into. So this is one bag of dark chocolate chips. So I like to use 60% or darker and one tablespoon of butter. And then I let it cool till it's of, of a thicker consistency that I can dip these in and it will stick to the tops of them. And the best part about making all of these is that you get to actually sample them. Mmm, they're so delicious. Just the right amount of chocolate, a nice crispy shell, and a very light espresso mousse in there. It is the perfect finger dessert to serve to your guests during the holidays. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we will see you at the Q&A session. Thank you. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for joining again this week, learning about pate choux. Um, I had a really good time making those. They're actually one of my favorite things 
to make when I'm entertaining, uh, just because they are so versatile and you can do so much with them. And you can also make them ahead of time, a couple of days ahead of time and keep them uh, stored in a container. Uh, so you don't have to make them last minute. And uh, they're great for entertaining, also great for the holidays. And uh, you can use, there's so many different recipes um, that are made by the French that actually use the puffs um, from a, a, a gâteau saint Honoré to a uh, croquembouche. Um, you, you know, you can fill those small puffs that I did the curried chicken salad in also with a pastry cream and dip those and just have some uh, cream filled puffs to serve. Um, so let me see what questions we have coming today. The first one is, how do you store that for serving later? Um, so the, the, you don't wanna keep the pastry cream out of the refrigerator for too long. Um, it will hold out for you know two or three hours. So you can assemble that and get it set out on the counter and leave it to serve for dessert. Um, but what I typically like to do is make all of the components the day before. So I'll bake the, off the pate choux ring um, or the eclair puffs. I will make the uh, filling and I will pre-melt the chocolate if I'm using that. And I'll get all that done and assembled so that the day of that I'm entertaining, I can quickly do that about an hour before guests come and just keep it on the counter uh, and it will serve beautifully uh, at the time for dessert. You are, uh, somebody asked if you're getting recipes. You are, uh, will be getting a recipe emailed to you for the pate choux that I make and also for my curry chicken salad. Um, which I promise if you make it, it will be something that you will make forever and ever. It's, it's really a crowd pleaser. Uh, what is the ring that you made called? Oh, so that ring um, that I was piping out around that plastic form is called a Paris breast. And it's a very old, um, I think it was like the, the mid or late 1800s that that was developed in France. Um, so it's called a Paris breast. And it's just another form of serving uh, that type of a, of a dessert. Will you also give a recipe for the mousse? Um, I did not have a recipe for the mousse uh, to send because I did not want to inundate you guys uh, with a million recipes. This really was about uh, making hors d'oeuvres for entertaining. And usually because I always, you know, every time I do this, I will make some savory and some sweet. I thought I would just add in some of the mousse, but I will tell you that I make a pudding, <clears throat> excuse me, and I fold in fresh whipped cream that's been scented into the pudding to make the mousse. It's a very easy way to do it. I do make my pudding from scratch, but you, uh, are, uh, you can obviously use box pudding of any flavor that you want. Um, for this one, I made a homemade vanilla pudding and I scented my whipped cream with, um, uh, instant espresso and a little bit of vanilla and a touch of sugar and I folded those two together and that's what made the mousse. So it's a really easy process to do. What's the lower temperature? Oh, good point. I should have said that in the video. Thank you. Um, 325, 350, depending on your oven, um, usually at that end process. So the, the puffs start out for 10 to 12 minutes at 425 and then you turn the heat down in the oven to 350. And you do not want to open the oven at any time within the first 20 to 25 minutes of these cooking. They really need that heat to form the steam inside of them to give them a crisp shell. So after about 20 or 25 minutes, I'll go in the oven and flip the tray so that they're baking evenly. But when you do take them out to poke the holes, I'll put it back into the oven and I'll lower the temperature to about 325 for about two or three minutes and then take them out and let them cool. Were you baking the eclairs on parchment paper or something else? I was using a Silpat um, and I spoke about this in one of the other videos. So it's just a silicone baking mat that uh, they're reusable. They're fantastic to have in your kitchen. You should have two or three of them hanging uh, around for baking purposes, <clears throat> but you can also do them on parchment paper uh, if you prefer. 
The next question is the brush I use for an egg washer or butter get, and it's hard to clean. What kind of brush do you use so it can be clean? Um, I actually use silicone brushes. I don't like um, the old fashioned uh, hair type of brushes. They always, for me, have seemed to fall apart and the bristles come out and then you've, you're picking it out of the food. So I really love um, those silicone brushes because they work great for egg washes, for butter, um, for egg white washes. They're just pretty versatile and they're really easy to clean and they can go in the dishwasher. Can you refrigerate the dough? Uh, yes, you can. <clears throat> Once the dough is made, you can. Although I don't think you get as good of a puff pastry as when you're piping the dough out warm and putting it right into the oven. Um, it, yes, you can do that, um, but I, have, I don't do it uh, because I like to make them fresh. And for that reason, once those puffs are actually baked, you can keep them in a sealed container for three or four days on the counter and give them a, a quick little crisp in the oven before you're ready to use them. And you can also freeze those puffs in a, in a, a very well sealed container for future use. So um, it's best to use the dough right away while it's warm and freshly cooked. In the chicken salad, are the capers whole or chopped? I chop mine. I don't like having huge pieces of things in food. So I like things to be well distributed uh, throughout. So I do chop my capers. I even chop the raisins a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a distribution. So when you bite into it, you're getting the flavor of it, but not just a raisin. Uh, what kind of mustard do you use? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'm kind of a mustard nerd. So I like very high quality mustard. Um, most mustards that you get in the grocery store, they're satisfactory. Um, but I do have a mustard that I order online, which is uh, from France and uh, it's called Fellow. And it is uh, probably one of the best mustards you've ever eaten. And once you've had it, you probably will never go back to anything else. Um, I used to carry it in my shop in Atlanta, but you can actually just order it online. It's called uh, Edmund Fallot, F-A-L-L-O-U-T, I believe. <clears throat> Let's see, how would you make a chocolate filling? Um, so I would make a homemade chocolate pudding. Again, you can use a boxed variety, let it cool and thicken. And then I would uh, make some fresh whipped cream using a little bit of vanilla, very little bit of sugar. You don't want it to be too sweet. And then fold the two together. And that gives you a quick chocolate mousse. I thought to sprinkle the baking sheet with water before it goes in the oven. Okay, <clears throat> so that is a, that is a, a great baking controversy. Um, a lot of people think that much like a water bath gives a very egg heavy type of a cheesecake, the ability to um, cook better and more and more solidly. Um, a lot of bakers like to wet the bottom of their parchment paper and then set it on top of a baking tray before piping your pate choux on top of it. I don't like that. I think it creates too much moisture in the oven. Uh, the, you're using fresh eggs as leaveners and there is enough moisture in those to produce a very uh, beautiful open airy puff with a hard shell. I find that the more moisture that you externally provide in the oven actually creates less of a crispy shell on the outside. And sometimes your puffs can tend to um, deflate a little bit and they're not as crispy. So I don't like doing it. Some people do, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I have just always found that the drier the oven allow that moisture to be inside the puff, not in the oven. But that's a great question. Thank you. Uh, let's see, how would you decorate the tops for a Christmas theme? Uh, well, you know, the, this powdered sugar always looks great. It looks like sprinkled snow. Um, you could also do a uh, drizzle of a caramel, or you could even make a sponge sugar, which is basically cooking uh, sugar and water together to a certain temperature. And then um, you 
are creating sort of a, with a, a spoon, you're waving it in the air so that it cools and it makes a very nice thin uh, topping to it. That's very Christmassy. Um, but these are really simple desserts. They're not that fancy. So they shouldn't, you shouldn't go overboard with decorating them. The beauty of them is in their simplicity. So show off actually what you have made rather than spending a lot of time decorating it and covering it. Uh, please talk about the type of raisins and curry spice needed for the chicken recipe. So I use blonde raisins. I don't use dark raisins. Um, blonde raisins to me have a little bit more of a milder flavor. Um, and I don't like seeing the dark specks of raisins in uh, the curry chicken salad. So I use blonde raisins and I use very fresh ones because you don't wanna reconstitute these with any water. You will end up uh, adding water to the chicken salad, which will just, once it's in the fridge, will end up watering down the mayonnaise. So I use very fresh um, raisins and I, I give them a little chop. And you know, when you're baking and you're putting raisins into batters, you can reconstitute them if they're a little hard. I don't do that for this. And also any type of curry powder will work. Um, any brand that is uh, in your grocery store will work fine. Um, some curry powders are a little bit spicier than others. Uh, so if it is, you may wanna add a little bit less. And you know, with making anything, be judicious in how you add your ingredients. If it's an ingredient that you're mixing, um, like in the curry chicken salad, you can always add more, you can't take it out. So. If you're worried about it, add one tablespoon, add two tablespoons. Um, you can always add more by tasting it rather than once there's too much in there, you've ruined it. Can you freeze leftover chicken salad? No, you cannot. But you can make your chicken and then you can, you can cook your chicken, chop it all up and freeze it in a container so that if you do want to make a quick recipe of it, if you've got somebody coming over last minute, you can pull it out, thaw it out, chop up some of the ingredients and mix it together. Never heard of Duke's mayonnaise. How is it different? Um, so <clears throat> Duke's is probably, in my opinion, one of the best mayonnaise made. And the reason for it is because they do not add sugar to it. So it does not have that sweet aftertaste that most mayonnaise, like a Hellman's or the... Um, blue spoon or whatever it's called um, has. Most manufacturers add sugar. Duke's does not. So I find that Duke's does well in, in a lot more recipes and I really, it's the only mayonnaise that I ever use for anything. And I've got one last question here. Let's see if anybody has any more, please feel free to send them in as I'm answering. Can I make these a couple of days before serving? Just the salad, maybe a day or two for the pastry. Yes, you can make both. Uh, the curry chicken salad, you can make one to two days ahead. That will usually hold for about five days in your refrigerator. And the puffs, you can make one or two days ahead and just keep them in a, a covered container on your uh, kitchen counter. Um, they won't go bad. The, if you find that keeping the puffs in that container have softened them a little bit, you can just pop them in a 350 degree oven for about five minutes they will crisp right back up and be uh, absolutely wonderful. Um, so that is, all, oh no, I got another one, let's see. What about making your own mayonnaise? Oh, always make your own mayonnaise. Um, <clears throat> I don't make my own mayonnaise for that recipe anymore, but I have, uh, and it's fantastic. So fresh eggs, uh, oil, uh, a little bit of mustard in it, and some salt and pepper, and you can whisk up your own mayonnaise. It's fantastic. It really, if, if you're into that, always make fresh mayonnaise. Uh, have you ever used delicious mayo? It hasn't been available for years. Uh, I have never used it. I've actually never even heard of it. So um, if you can send me some more information about it, uh, either through my Instagram or emailing me or on my website. I would love to learn more about it. I really love learning about um, old uh, uh, products like that that haven't been around in a while. So I have not heard of it, but uh, please send me some information about it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope uh, you guys got a lot out of that. You're gonna be getting the recipes. 
And like I said, you know, we're in a pandemic and we may only have two or three people at our home this year, but you know, this is, this is really the year to make something a little bit special to be thankful for our health and things that we do have going on in life um, to see us through this hard and difficult time. Um, and please, uh, if you have not been to my Instagram or my website um, or YouTube, it's at home with Joseph. All of these videos uh, are uploaded to YouTube and they are also uploaded to Aspire's uh, page as well. So you can see the full video and Q&A at Aspire. And, um, you know, if you have any further questions, email them to me, send me a direct message on Instagram. I'm happy to answer them anytime. Uh, thank you for coming. And we've got a really great episode scheduled for next week, but I can't tell you what it is yet because it's a surprise. It is the week before, or a couple of days before Thanksgiving. So uh, make sure you tune in and join us next week. Thank you.